Independent News and Media South Africa, IMSA, Chairman and Head of Second Jalo Investments, Iqbal Sulbe, denied in a statement earlier this month that Alida Dasnua had been fired, saying the former Cape Times editor had been offered alternative position in the company. The survey said Ms. Dasnua was not fired but removed as executive editor because the Cape Times had lost 28% of its readers over the past five years. Mr. Survey sacked Ms. Dasnua shortly after the newspaper ran a front page story on the public projector finding that the awarding of the fishing tender by Agricultural, Forestries and Fisheries Department, Sikinjala Marine Services Consortium, a subsidiary of Sikinjala Holdings that acquired the controlling share in IMSA earlier this year, was improper, which was believed to be the real reason behind Mr. Smoor's dismissal. After Mr. Survey said he didn't like the angle Mr. Smoor took on the story concerning claims of corruption and involving Second Jalo has raised concerns over editorial independence and has led a group of Cape Town residents express the fear that apparent editorial interference at the Cape Times could soon see the newspaper becoming a vehicle for peddling government propaganda, with the group saying would support a picket organized by the Right to Know campaign. Yesterday was calling for an editorial charter that would protect journalists from uh, the management of these big monopoly corporations. We're saying that the charter must be drafted through some kind of participatory process that includes readers and journalists. It's calling for, we're calling for the immediate reinstatement of the editor if she's willing to take her job back because we believe that she was illegally and illegitimately redeployed or fired. We're calling on the, the Second Jalo group to make a public commitment to not taking any more legal action against journalists of independent newspapers. Kinsey Business associated with corruption in the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries is our survey of owns independent newspaper has decided to dismiss one of the most courageous, decent human beings, a leader did not. And sadly, they organized a counter demonstration which brought out ANC, known ANC supporters, uh, under the so called Ansanko, under the, under the guise that it's about media transformation, that they should sack a leader. And that for me is, a, is, is tragic because we want to see a media transformation. We want to see a media transform, we want to see a free SABC, we want to see uh, corporate media under control and investing in independence and in quality journalism that looks at the lives of poor and working class people. And so our belief is that the media should be transformed, both against its racism and its, in terms of its natural bias towards the rich and powerful. I believe an injury to one is an injury to all. I believe a leader of Denmark has showed remarkable independence as editor of the Cape Times. I didn't always agree with her political stances. Ironically, uh, she was to the left of the, um, on, the on the political spectrum um, and often took positions that I personally uh, don't agree with. But that is her right as an editor and she demonstrated her independence time and time again and allowed real debate in her newspapers. And I think it's an absolute tragedy that a story Hello? written about the company that owns uh, the newspaper she works for oh, all right. uh, Thanks, saw you. her story that she carried on that particular day has been offensive. It's uh, the most primary for, uh, invasion of press freedom. And so an injury to one is an injury to one. And that is why I was here today.